for those who don't know you, why don't you give yourself a little introduction of kind of who you are, what your path and, and career had been be leading up to Beyond the Lake? Sure. Yeah. Um, well, I'm David Sokolar. I play Joe Lakeman in Beyond the Lake. Yeah, I, I have been primarily working in theater since graduating in 2016. And then I was in the middle of the national tour of a musical called Waitress, written by Sarah Bareilles, when the pandemic struck and we were sort of uprooted from our lives. And I had to sort of take a hiatus because obviously, you know, theater uh, didn't exist for quite some time. Um, so I was living at home with my parents and a friend of mine reached out to me, I think on Instagram, or maybe she texted me and was like, hey, I've got someone who's looking for the lead in a independent film. They just lost their actor to an accident. What are your thoughts? And I was like, I had all this time of just like feeling kind of purposeless. So for a project to come up, like rejuvenated my spirits. And so at first I was like, this seems, you know, as an actor, you're always like, this can't be true. Like somebody wants me to play the lead in a movie. Yeah. And then you and I got in touch and we sort of did a little bit of a, uh, an audition interview session. And then, you know, I sang a, a song for you or, or, did a scene for you or something. A couple of meetings later, I think we decided it was a good fit. I sent you the scene that takes place in Joe's house when Allison comes over, still unaware that kind of Joe has been behind all her misfortune on Lakeside. And you, I think you got together with a couple of your friends and you kind of talked about the scene, like what what could this mean? What could you know, yeah. the line represent? And I was really impressed. Right, right. The performance that it, it made as a result was like super spot. I was like, ooh, this is, this is really good. Obviously, I think the first stuff we did was we shot a little bit in Pittsburgh. We shot kind of like, you know, the Halcyon Days shoot first, that first evening. You're in a new city. You're working with all these new people. You're, you're, you're sleeping in a stranger's basement. What, what, what was that like for you? What was kind of going through your head? It was, it was a whirlwind because it was very much, okay, here's the script. Okay, here's the order we're shooting. And I had to sort of learn everything as quickly as I could as we got to that day of shooting because, you know, you had planned this whole thing with this other guy. So I, I sort of felt like I was a little bit playing catch up most of the time. I don't want to be the guy who comes and is the lead in this movie and isn't prepared. Second of all, I need to, you know, figure out who I am in this group of people. And and so it was it was fun because everybody was really kind and inviting and it was just a really warm set. The hospitality at the Port Curry residence was 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 really nice. So I never felt too much like I was imposing. Not only did you have such great chemistry with Allison right off the bat, but like you had like a similar sense of humor to just the crew. And that's so rare on movie sets for the talent and like the crew to like get along as well as you and all the crew members. Like you, know, you, you love the Lord of the Rings and Game of Thrones. You were making yeah. the jokes that we were like that was that was incredible. As someone who's done more plays than films, there are different challenges for each. Obviously, the the endurance of playing the arc of a character every night multiple multiple times is its own challenge. But then the the endurance of sort of the kind of hurry up and wait atmosphere of being on set for film and 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 being ready when everything's ready to go and okay we got to turn it on we got to be this guy now and then 30 minutes go by and okay we got to reset we got to set up a different shot this it was new for me i mean i'd done some short films but it was new to be shooting something that long some people don't know that movies are shot out of sequence and so you know okay where are we in the story here? Okay, so this has happened, but that's not happened. So I so I know that, but let's make sure we're not playing that because we don't know about that yet. The first shot of the movie is actually the last thing we filmed, which is you stepping out into the alley and smashing that guitar over the table. Right. So what was it like, you know, to, to smash an acoustic guitar? It was, it went against every fiber of my body. Um, and I knew we had one shot, right? <laughs> I wasn't going to like half break it, be like, oh, we got to do that again. You know, there was no way to do it twice. And it was this quite cathartic moment of, uh, okay, well, I guess we're done with this movie because we just destroyed the guitar. <laughs> And we can't do anymore. Yeah. I remember I had uh, I had told you that it was gonna break just at the neck, and the complete opposite happened. Where like the, the next day together, the whole thing shattered to pieces. And there, there's this moment you can see where like you're obviously surprised that it broke the way it did, and then you oh kind of get gosh. going. I think 
part of the fear of worrying about having to do it twice was I'm going to really hit this thing hard. <laughs> and I think the, the guitar just popped. But what were your expectations of what the the film, the crew, the, the, the logistics are going to be? How did your expectations stack up to kind of what you found? Get me in a creative space that has people who, who want to be creating something that's good. That was what mattered to me. Like, I don't want to be going and, and devoting my time and energy to something that I'm the only one there who wants it to be good. And I think that was what was most important to me. And that's what showed. I still felt like an outsider in a way because I felt like I had less experience in this medium than everybody else did. So it, I was more anxious for myself because I felt like I was the fish out of water here and I just wanted to like step up to the plate. Well, speaking of, uh, you know, coming into new things and feeling like an outsider, let's talk a bit about Lakeside. Because talk, talk about your kind of like first impressions with Lakeside and kind of how you came to to see the, the place you shot at. Well, first of all, I was just like, this is a great place to spend a month and have something to work on for a month. I grew up going to a place with a pool and a golf course, and tennis courts, and this place that we would go every year. So it sort of evoked that energy to me and I feel like there are so many people that have that place that they will sort of equate Lakeside to when they see the movie. You almost feel like you're floating above reality in an interesting way and I think that goes really well with the movie and the themes of the movie of, of escaping your reality and both Joe and Allison are kind of trying to have some kind of renaissance for themselves and get away from their demons. I feel like when we're here, we're kind of, we can be our best selves to have that come crumbling down kind of creates this battle of the setting and the the action that's like kind of, kind of fun to play with, I think. You shot in a lot of the hallmark places of Lakeside from, you know, obviously you have Joe's house across from the Hoover Auditorium, you were in the bike shop, you were in the coffee shop, you are on the lake, you are in the lake. You were in the lake in, what was that, the end of October? Yeah, I think it was negative 25 degrees out when we shot that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was, it was cold. We were playing that it was hot. Yeah, that's and, another thing that a lot of people know is that, you know, it, it looks like it's summer, but we were shooting like September, October. So, you know, you're in short sleeves and a, a t-shirt. As soon as we call a cut, it's like people are being wrapped in blankets and like everyone's yeah, jumping yeah. around on set to stay warm. Specifically the, the jumping in the lake. And I remember there's a moment where I'm below the water and then I kind of come up and go back down. You know, when you get in cold water and it's so cold out that you your body almost can't breathe. You, you almost forget how to breathe. And so you're like, okay, now go below the water. And I'm like, and I'm, and we did it, I think like three or four times, maybe four or five times. I don't know. You hit four, you're like, guys, that's all I got. Well, that, that was yeah. probably one of your more uncomfortable memories on set. What's, what are some of your better memories? Let's say like, what's the hardest you laughed? What, what are some of your favorite scenes to shoot? What are things that kind of stick in your head of like, ah, oh, that was a good time. That was a really powerful scene. I enjoyed the day of shooting where we were at out at the quarry. That was a great day. Um, yeah, jumping into the lake and doing that dripping scene out on the out on the quarry and everything. And that day sticks out to me as, as a fond memory. Yeah, and one of the one of the I think one of my favorite scenes to shoot was the scene with Nat on the porch. That just felt like the nitty gritty of, of who this guy was. The extremes that he goes to in his mind, I guess. Circumstance can put a person in a headspace that can make them say things they don't mean, that can make them do do things they don't mean to do, and that can show their true colors. And I feel like that was a like tipping point in the film, but also I think in, in my journey playing the character, that was definitely one that stuck out to me. And, and on the lighter side, I, I we had so much fun in that bike shop, improv We basically started saying, okay, you're in a bike shop, you're frustrated, they're all out of bikes, go. And I think we did a, like some takes where we couldn't get through it because we were laughing so hard. That's one of the talents of yours that I am most impressed with is your uncanny ability to keep a straight face and not laugh. What is your secret to not laughing when everybody else is just dying around you? Just being so committed to whatever is going on inside your head because it's funny because like when I'm on stage and you know I'm in the background of a scene or something I have a hard time not breaking if something goes wrong or something but if I'm directly involved in the scene if, if I'm talking to someone I have a much easier time not breaking I get so much pleasure out of breaking other people that <laughs> I try my best to leave the breaking to them and and reap the rewards you talked about the scene on the porch. This is definitely something you've never done before is ADR. You actually re-recorded your dialogue for 
a lot of scenes, one of which was that porch scene. And I remember like you were super on it that night when we shot. So what was what was the 80? What was it like as a theater person coming into an ADR session and just like having to watch yourself act, try to, to then like match your voice, but also kind of get yourself back into the moment of where you were as as that character, you know, nine months ago? Yeah, that was challenging. That was probably one of the hardest parts of the entire experience for me. Because as you said, coming from stage and, you know, what you say is what everybody hears and it's all live. And if you would have liked for something to go better, you do it the next night. But with this, it's like, okay, you do your takes, you hope that you got something good and you're like, okay, it's done. And then to be presented with, okay, uh, the audio is not super clean here. So let's go back in and fill in these lines. Your brain just kind of goes... I already did that. I already got my, I already went through the inner process of finding the truth of these, of these moments. And then to sort of have to reconjure that in a less formal setting was super challenging. It was funny because Allison was so uncannily good at it. Like it was almost yeah. scary though, how, how quickly she was able to mimic exactly what she did and like line up her time. And I was like, oof, okay. Um, it was annoying. I was like, that's annoying. <laughs> Well, another yeah. thing we did that weekend was we recorded the master track of it was of your vocals and the guitar for all the songs of Beyond the Lake. And like, obviously you're playing a folk musician and, and there's theater singing and there, there's like folk singing and they're very different things. I know we had a lot of conversations about those. What was it like coming from a very kind of technically correct singing style to a more kind of grungy, more tired sound? And how did you, how'd you approach that? I think like we worked together a lot and we obviously talked a lot together because for those more intimate songs, more uh, uh, more off the voice songs, it was definitely tricky. Like I think we had to find language that would help me get to that point because it, it definitely went against my instinct. First of all, how did you just approach the character in general and where did you feel you most related to this character, this, this Joe Lake character? I, I thought he was the darker side of myself. We're all just doing our best out here and we're all fighting our own fights and struggling and relationships are hard and finding our passion is hard. And especially in, in the arts world, it's like there's so much rejection and there's so much trying and failing and so much more failing than succeeding a lot of the time. And I think that's kind of where I found my way into Joe. I've loved and lost. I've broken up with people. I've been broken up with. I know what it's like to feel like you're on top of the world and then the next day to feel like you're at the bottom of the pool. Cruel question, but did you you had a breakup during this filming, didn't you? I did. I had a breakup during the Thanks, filming. Tom. Yeah, great. Let's talk about that. <laughs> I know that a lot of people come to terms with perhaps things that have been circling in their mind when they're given the chance to sort of explore someone else and to play a character and to distance yourself from yourself for a little bit. And then you come back to yourself and you're like, oh, I guess I'm not completely happy. Um, it's a strange thing. And now I'm getting to the point where I'm like going into the psyche of like being an actor and stuff. And it's pretty weird sometimes. That definitely informed things, you know, it made things harder and some things easier. You know, I was in a very emotionally available space. So um, perhaps in a sort of masochistic way that helps. <laughs> I think that's an interesting part about film. It feels like it bleeds more in film than in theater almost, because in theater there's a set at the end of every show. It's like, okay, peel off that skin, go home. But with film, it's long days and you're sort of in and out of the character and there's long scenes or whatever where I was like, I kind of feel like I have to sort of stay in this headspace while they're resetting for a different angle or I'm just going to lose it. Why don't you tell for folks that kind of want to learn more about you, what you're doing now and how they can find and follow you and all that jazz. You can find me on Instagram at David Sokolar. And I love sharing what I'm up to. So feel free to drop on by. Yeah, we killed it in Beyond the Lake. Can't wait for you to see yourself on screen. And I know the folks at Lakeside love you. And can't stop talking about the movie. It took four different actors to find you, but I wouldn't have it any other way. Oh, any day. well, neither would I. <laughs> Same thing you want to say to the folks at Lakeside or who are watching this? Just hello, and I hope you're enjoying the movie. And uh, yeah, I'm so, so glad we got to to sort of have this, you know, version. I know that I, I, I wish I could have been there in person, but I said, hey, Dom, why don't we do, why don't we do something digitally? So I'm glad it worked out. All right, dude. Have a great evening. See you, man.